It was standing tall on the tiny island of Pharaohs on the Nile Delta. The lighthouse was a beacon to the magnificent city of Alexandria. This important cultural and economic port was built in 4th century BC by Alexander the Great. The lighthouse of Alexandria was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The 100 meter tall tower was the highest man-built construction on earth for centuries. It is believed that the lighthouse was built to show what a great socio-economic and cultural port Alexandria was. But was this the real purpose it was built for? There's also another theory that says the lighthouse had a specific curved mirror on top that could send destructive magnified sunbeam to the sea at the time of war. Based on this theory, the lighthouse was actually a defense system that could set any military ship on Nile on fire. But why did the city of Alexandria require such advanced military technology in the 3rd century BC? There are those who believe it was built to protect this building from any foreign invasions. The Great Library of Alexandria, the largest and most significant library of the ancient world. This building was a storage for hundreds of documents about secrets of the ancient Egypt. Scrolls about Egyptian science, medicine, architecture, afterlife, and magic. The library was destroyed by the Roman army invasion in the 3rd century and those scrolls were lost. The history of ancient Egypt dates back to 3100 BC when nomads arrived and created the first settlements in the northern region of the Nile Valley. It is believed the civilization lasted for about 3000 years during which several invasions took place. Ancient Egypt was one of the most sophisticated civilizations in the ancient times. The empire established 6,000 years ago and lasted for about 3,000 years. During these three millenniums, the Egyptians possessed the most advanced science and technology of their times. One way to figure out the discoveries of ancient world is through their writings. 
With the documents burned and lost during the war, archaeologists were left with no choice other than deciphering the writing system of Egyptians. But how could they learn how to read the ancient Egyptian language? Rosetta Stone, which was created in 196 BC, included an inscription in three languages. The top and middle texts are in ancient Egyptian using hieroglyphic and demotic scripts, while the bottom is in ancient Greek. There were only minor differences between these three versions, and it made the Rosetta Stone a key to decipher Egyptian hieroglyphs. As a rule, ancient Egyptian pharaohs spent a large part of their time on the throne preparing the place of their burial. Throughout most of the Old and Middle Kingdoms, the kings chose a site in the northern part of the country. Then they built a pyramid-shaped structure to house the mummy and the items they thought were essential for the afterlife. They believed that monuments such as these could help to ensure them a place in the next world. It was not too long before they perfected the building process and created monumental architectural wonders at sites such as Saqqara, Midim and Giza. After the king died and the rituals and ceremonies associated with burial took place, the body of the king was positioned in the burial chamber. Then the sealing process began. After putting the solid stone doorways into place, access to the burial chamber would be cut off. Other blocking stones could be used to obstruct passage through the corridors. Finally, a large stone was placed over the entranceway, which was then sealed and covered. It was believed that there were curses on the tombs for those who tried to enter them. Anyone who tried to enter a tomb was doomed and they were to expect something terrible happening to them. Archaeologists discovered that the calculations in pyramids designs were even more precise than many of the modern skyscrapers. Thousands of men were engaged in building these wonderful pyramids with bare hand and primitive tools. They were using tools made of copper to cut through the huge stones. The interesting point about these workers is they were not slaves, they were paid workers. If they were injured, they would get medical treatment and they were injured. In ancient Egypt, tombs were only built for pharaohs and not the general population. But because the Egyptian dynasties lasted for such a long period, there are quite a few tombs still in existence today. The pharaoh's tombs were meant to preserve their bodies and souls.
The Egyptians had a very strong belief in afterlife and they thought the dead would continue to live after the death. This can be seen in the tradition of making offerings to the dead including food to help them flourish in the afterlife. The doors of the pyramids were very heavy. The Egyptians alone may have known how to open these great doors. In fact, the doors were so heavy that they were almost hard to be identified as doors as they did not open easily at all. Their opening mechanism was only discovered when the Great Pyramid was being studied by scientists who realized that they were huge swivel doors. The door had the strange feature of being very easy to open with just one hand from the inside but almost impossible to open from the outside. How the Egyptians were able to balance these 20 turn doors in order to create this effect remains a mystery. Stones that were used to build the pyramids were almost 10 tons each, heavier than an elephant. How they were able to lift the stones up remains a mystery and is still being researched by scientists. The pyramids rose to about 203 steps and each of the stones have been placed with astonishing precision and still stand strong today. And these stones were carried up the pyramids before wheels being invented. The Egyptians believed that their pharaohs should be buried along with their treasures and sometimes even their slaves. Therefore, gold, jewelry, clothes were put in the tombs with the mummies. Over the years, rulers of other kingdoms have destroyed the pyramids and taken these jewels and valuables back to their own respective kingdoms. Although the pyramids are very hard to damage, smaller pyramids were targeted and dropped. One such example of this can be Great Pyramid of Giza. There is evidence of a failed breaking and the deep hole that was made in the pyramid's structure is still visible today. It is in fact astonishing that the ancient Egyptians could create buildings with such precision. This careful and intelligent level of construction can be seen in other monuments in Egypt as well, not just the pyramids. Without the help of machinery and even before the invention of the wheel, they achieved as much as modern man is able to build today. The Egyptian Book of the Dead is an ancient Egyptian funerary text. It was used from the beginning of the New Kingdom around 1550 BC to around 50 BC.
This book contains spells to help a dead person travel through the Duat, or realm of the dead, into the afterlife. This Book of the Dead includes pyramids and coffin texts which were originally painted onto objects and not papyrus. In 1922, Howard Carter could manage to open the mysterious tomb of Tutankhamun. He discovered the magnificent treasure inside the tomb that the king wished to carry with him to the afterlife. Golden chariot, throne and wine, but this was not the whole discovery. A false wall was separating the treasure chamber from Tutankhamun's coffin. Inside the coffin were two more coffins. The innermost was made of gold and inside was lying the mummified body of the king with his famous death mask on. Investigations on the mummy showed that the young king had been killed at the age of 19. They found a hole on the back of his head which made them believe the king's murderer had used an object to hit him on the head. But later they discovered that the hole had been made after his death to remove the brain from the skull in the mummification process. To mummify a body, Egyptians would first remove all the organs from the body and bury them in a separate chest. The organs could also be placed into a pot and would be placed between their legs in the same coffin. They also found marks of unhealed wounds on his legs, which could be a sign of being poisoned to death. Not only the ancient Egyptians were masters of architecture, but also they were advanced in medicine. There were actually two types of healers at the time. Theorgic or upper class. They were basically priests who would practice magic and call on gods for healing the sick. They would also interpret the dreams of those who were sick to find some kind of clue in their dreams to cure their medical issue. And the inferior class were the physicians, who were called Snu. These physicians were using natural remedies and even performed surgeries. Imhotep was the first physician known in history who was born in Memphis around 2500 BC. Amazingly, Imhotep was also the architect of the first pyramid. After his death, he was elevated to the title of God of Medicine. 
Also, Sichet is the name of the first female physician. Over a hundred female physicians are named in the scrolls who have served in ancient Egypt. The oldest medical papyrus is called Cahun, which is mostly about gynecology. There have also been amazing discoveries about dentistry in ancient Egypt. Studies on mummy's teeth showed they did not have much cavities. This may have been because of the type of diet they had. Here we can see a bridge made of gold keeping teeth in place. Edwin Smith Papyrus belongs to 600 BC, is a document about surgeries performed by Egyptians. It also shows they had specialist doctors for head, hands and legs. Also many different surgical tools were discovered. Papyruses contain information about fixing wounds, splinting and bandaging. They even developed prosthetics. This mummy has a big prosthetic too. One of the first recorded surgeries is circumcision, which was painted on the walls of the tomb of Ankh Mahur. The holes in many skulls from that era can be a sign of brain surgery. But we still don't know what exactly they were doing during these surgeries. One amazing side of ancient Egypt medicine was family practice. They had treatments for female reproductive tract. They provided fertility aid. They even had contraceptives. One of the methods was for the woman to drink a mixture of beer, celery and a kind of oil for four days in a row to prevent getting pregnant. They also had substances for women to apply that would create acidic environment and it could decrease the chance of pregnancy. And to our surprise, they even had pregnancy tests. The woman had to urinate on a bag of barley and a bag of emmer. Then they had to wait for the reaction. If the barley grew, the baby would be a boy, and if Emmer grew, the baby would be a girl. And if nothing grew out of the bags, it meant they were not pregnant. This test was tried in modern times and it was 70% effective about positive and negative results and 50% accurate about the gender of the baby. <laughs> 